Grow, Sell, and Retire is the podcast for the lazy overachiever. B.D. Dalton, author of True Gravity and Grow, Sell, and Retire, is here to give you his 25 years of secrets, tips, and systems to take your business to the next level. This is your chance to find out what is working in sales, marketing, and running your business. If you stop learning, you stop burning. Now, here's your host, BD, with today's GSR Podcast. Hey, everybody. BD Dalton here from the Grow, Sell, and Retire Podcast, coming to you with the personal branding group of GSR Podcasts. I'm trying to help you be a lazy overachiever. People talk about not wanting to be lazy, but tell you what, if you want to make sure that something gets done in the most efficient way possible, give it to a lazy person. They will make sure that they get it done quicker and easier than anybody else. So guess what? We're going to talk about the A's of personal branding today. And I wanted to get this out there because May for me is huge, hugely full of different things. I'm going to Madrid. I'm going to Italy. I'm going to walk around. I've got three different pitches for brand new businesses, as in we're going to buy. And the second thing is, or the one more thing is, I've got 10 different speaking gigs running around, plus really looking at five different clients that we're working with to make sure that they can take their business to the next level. Some of them are actually multi-million pound turnover and want to go to more than 10 million pounds turnover. Some of them want to get ready to sell in the next two years. So guess what? We're going through quite a few of these different personal branding exercises with them too. So the BDC group, the, the Bart Dalton Consulting, while aptly named easy for me, BD Dalton, but the team, the catalysts, are really getting out and looking at people and how they can go through it. And one of the things we're working on is this idea of personal branding. It's just big right now, huge. The last two years have just been full of it. All the podcasts out there are kind of going through it that are talking to the salespeople and making sure that they get their personal brand, what people say about you when you're not in the room, to a T. Very, very focused. So I thought I'd really get this out there. And then today is A. A is the letter of the personal branding episode today for the GSR podcast. This one is, the very first A is actions. Guess what? Nobody, nobody counts what you put in. They only count the outputs. They don't count the inputs. They only count the outputs. It's one of those where people, they don't care how you get there. They just want to see what you did when you got to the end of it. So personal branding a number one is actions. Your actions need to be, write this down, SDI. Small. So they don't have to be huge actions. They don't have to be lots of stuff. Just little actions over and over again that happen. And they make sure that, guess what? Lots of little actions equal up to one big action. But if you're doing small actions, it makes it so much easier to go out and gather the ideas and bring in a proper proper action altogether. So little actions, little things. So they can be little thank you notes. They can be these little things, but they have to be D. So S, D, D is deliberate. Deliberate is, okay, guess what? I need to get to this person. I know that they like to, what, fly, play golf, whatever else it is, travel. So guess what? I know that they're getting ready to go away. So I send them a travel magazine or I call them up and with, or send them an email with the top 10 things to do in Verona when they go there. Or let's say somebody was doing that to me, the top 10 things to do in Cortona. So very deliberate, not huge things, but things that make you think, you know what, that person was actually keeping me in their thoughts and moving it forward. And if they were doing that before I'm their client or during I'm their client, what do you think they're doing for my business while they're actually working for me? So it's really these things that are small, deliberate, and hugely, and this is the I, S-D-I, impactful. So guess what? So you get them the, the 10 things to do in Cortona while they're there. Then a very, very easy thing to do is, guess what? If you figure out, and it's not stocking, but if you can figure out one or two things that they can have either delivered to them or have done for them when they're there. So let's just say that you, they get, they're going to Rome and you want to make sure they're there is, guess what? If you could send them something that shows up at their apartment or if you can say I'd really like to send something to them if it's a big big client you talk to their PA and say I'd really like to send something to BD while he's away in Cortona send him this 
or send him that. What what do you think would be an amazing thing? So I'd like to just send him something small, not something big, but something that would be impactful for him. So small, deliberate, impactful actions. That's the first day. The second one, and this is this is so important. And in today's world, you know, I've gone from wearing ties every day to not wearing ties some days. But when I'm going in for a big sales pitch or when I'm going in to make sure that I want to be impactful in a room of people, I need to be have my appearance be one level above the rest of the people in the room. So I'm not saying you need to wear a tuxedo. You don't need to be James Bond. But you do need to make sure that you understand your audience. You don't have to be overkill, but your appearance really matters. So let's, let's think of this. The things that, that operate here, and I call it basically your personal. So this is you. So some of us like to have a 5 o'clock shadow. Some of us don't. But you really need to, if you're going to let your hair grow long, if you're going to let your suit and be comfortable, things like that, make sure it's not slobby. It's comfortable. So jeans are cool. Make sure your jeans are good. If you're going to be wearing tennis shoes, make sure your tennis shoes are decent. Because if you guys are out there listening to this, you're trying to make that impression that keeps there. You want to might, might make the impression that, you know what, I can be comfortable at work because I am the big cheese. But... I want to make sure that you understand that when you show up and you look really slovenly or you don't do this, unless you are a rock star, unless you are amazing, unless you can prove yourself after that, people will judge you. Second thing comes into your office. And this is whether it's a home office, whatever else it is, people judge you on the appearance of your office. They make it so if it's a clean office, if people show up and they bring you the drinks, if your whiteboards are clean, if your things. So make sure that the appearance of your office, especially when you're pitching to people, is up to the expectations. If you are a highly paid law firm or if you're a highly paid financial advisor, you need to make sure that your appearance of your office lives up to not Ferrari lifestyle, but you want to make sure that you've got that Mercedes lifestyle so that they say, you know what, I'm not overly paying, but this actually feels comfortable and I feel confident these guys are successful or these ladies are successful and they're moving things forward with me and I am going to join them on their journey to success. So let's look at this. So you've got personal, you've got your office and your team. Make sure that your team feels like you feel. The people that are engaging, if they're on the phone, they need to feel and have the appearance of being engaged, active, energetic, moving forward, knowledgeable. They need to have that appearance that they are maybe not your exact equals, but they are going in the same direction that you are. And if people are going to meet them, make sure that if you are a financial advice firm or if you're a law firm, that people aren't meeting them in sandals and socks. If you're a scientist, that might work for you. If you're working in a software house, that might work for you. So you might be meeting with the right people, but it still doesn't mean that you should be slovenly. So make sure that your team shows up and anybody that's engaging with the rest of the people, you need to make sure that if you want to step up and start dealing with more CEOs and more MDs and all these other things, you need to make sure that you dress like they would want you to be dressed. One step above the other guys that they've seen, one step above the SEO house that they met with, one step above the software guys that they met with, the ladies that are actually helping them drive their PR forward, drive their law forward, anything like that. Make sure that you are one step ahead of what they would expect. And when you look at your brand, make sure that when you're doing your brand reorganizations, when you're looking at your overall brand, that it represents you and you fit into that brand. So you might not be the boss here, but you might be somebody that's in a sales team working it forward. And do you fit in with the brand that you're delivering? If you don't, you know what? And I say this a lot, move on. Because if you don't represent the brand that's that's being sold there, then you're never going to be the top salesperson that you can be. You're never going to be the top director that you can be. Because if you don't fit in and you don't have that personal brand that matches up with your company's brand, oh my God, you're just fighting against yourself the whole time. And you're going to be spending that energy, that time, and that focus going in the wrong direction or actually trying to put a round peg in a square hole. So you have actions. You have appearance. The last one is associations. So think about this. This is the people that you hang out with. If 
you want to sell to people that don't drink at all or have a very low tolerance for having lots of beverages, and that's your main source of income, you don't want to hang out with a bunch of party goers. If you have somebody that really, really dislikes going to the horse races or something like that, you need to make sure that that's not where you're seen and that's not where you're, you're going out with. And then, and there's, there's things, there's lots of different fraternal organizations and things like that that people don't want to be associated with. And it's not because they're bad, it's just because it doesn't match up with that demographic. So the groups of people that you're hanging out with, if somebody in your group doesn't like to be a member of that organization, that lodge, that whatever else it is, make sure that you are not associating with those people. If they see you associating with them, then that's really going to pull them back. And, you know, right now we've got a huge thing when it comes to personal branding, and I don't want to get political, but you get you get secular, you get divided when you've got the National Rifle Association and you've got President Trump going out there. It divides the nation. It divides it. So that's a group. It doesn't mean that it's not right. You have to make sure you go where your, your pound is, where your dollar is, but you just need to make sure that when you do that, just like we talk about in the book, Grow, Sell, and Retire, a magnet attracts and it also repels. So remember, those associations and those groups that you're getting together with, they definitely can attract or repel. The same thing when it comes down to people. We saw groups of people, but individuals. Because so there's individuals that can be hugely attractive to other people that you hang out with, but they can be hugely repelling to other people. So your associations can make or break what you do. So when you've got your actions in line, your appearance in line, who are you hanging out with that's making things progress for you, progress for your clients, progress for your team? And lastly, and it was funny because I was just reading something on, on Twitter, where here in Birmingham, the home of Cadbury's, and guess who was sponsoring the goodie bags in the 10K run that happened today? Lent. Amazing. Why wasn't there a Cadbury's bar in there? You need to associate where people want you to associate. You need to be able to make sure that you are in line. So guess what? If your clients are typically Toyota drivers, you need to make sure that your brand associates with Toyota drivers. If it's Mercedes drivers, you need to make sure that your brand feels and integrates with Mercedes drivers. You need to make sure that everything that you're doing with your associations, because everything that you do in your business is tied back to your personal brand. It's tied back to you. It's tied back to your actions, your appearance, and your associations. So I would take at the end of this podcast and write down three actions that you're going to do. So three actions that you're going to do to gather a better group of clientele or a better group of employees. Three things that you're going to do. Three plus points on your appearance. Do one for your personal, one for your office, and one for your team. The last thing is with your associations. I want you to write down a list of three associations and people that you're going to work yourself away from. And three associations or groups or brands that you're going to work yourself towards. So there's some homework at the end of this one. If this is your first time listening to the GSR podcast, the Gross Sell and Retire podcast, I want you to make sure you subscribe. I love it when you subscribe. I love it when you pass it on. Make sure you're passing it on. Make sure you're following us on Facebook. You're following us on Twitter. You're following us. Go to the website. Get downloading the actual emails that we send through to you. We try to give you little bits of True Gravity, little bits of Gross Sell and Retire. We've got Dr. Marketing and Mr. True Gravity out there. So we're trying to give you as much free stuff as possible. But guess what? We'd still love to work with you. If you're in the UK, we'd love to come out and speak to you. We've got a couple of different things on networking. We've got some great things on sales and marketing working together between Dr. Marketing and Mr. True Gravity. And guess what? I can get in and the team can come in and go through with the launch package the three documents you need to make sure that you can sell your business for more money very, very, very soon. So remember that personal branding today, A, this is BD Dalton for the Grow, Sell, and Retire podcast. Looking forward to helping you get to your next level because if you want to work for the rest of your life, that's your business. If you don't, that's mine. Thanks for joining us on Grow, Sell, and Retire. 
For more information, tools, or to book one of our team members to work with your team, business, or to speak at your event or conference, visit BartDaltonConsulting.com or email contact at BartDaltonConsulting.com. Buy the book True Gravity on Amazon. If you want to work for the rest of your life, that is your business. If you don't, that is ours.